Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an interview of a friend of mine and a fellow streamer who recently just hit a major hacking milestone known as Twitch. What is it? Twitch partner? Twitch purple uh, checkmark? Affiliate? No. Pur uh, purple. The purple checkmark gang. The purple checkmark gang. Yeah. Yes, which actually style-wise goes color. really well with your uh, green name too. It does. It kind of does look fancy. I don't know if you have chat up, but I will post it in there. And... Fresh. Damn. It just, it looks Fresh. like it fits, you know? Mm-hmm. Like you were meant to have that this whole time. It's just been an error from the beginning that I haven't had it. Twitch associate. That. Yeah. <laughs> Twitch associate. There you go. I like that. So the rough inspiration for this conversation was kind of based on some of my nostalgia in seeing you go through these like final stages of growth in your channel and your brand and everything and finally getting that achievement. And I told you a few times back, a few applications back that if you get to your seventh Twitch partner application and get rejected, I'll feel bad for you and buy you a drink. But that didn't happen. You got yes. in easy Why on the seven? sixth one. Why seven? For well, the people who do not know why seven. Well, because seven was how many it took me to get Twitch partner. I too was in a similar boat as you, where I was putting in a bunch of hours, working really hard, trying to get that Twitch partner. And mm. yeah, you ask and they're not gonna say yes necessarily, even if you think you deserve it at that point. They're very strict on who they let in. And the reason yeah. for that is you get better quality options, which means more of a server load. You also get more emote slots, which again is more resource for them. And there's a check mark, and it's just so big of a check mark that that's a really big server load for Twitch. So. PNG storage. I mean, PNGs are big files, guys. So yeah. they had to put in a whole server just for me. So, yeah. you know, they really, they're, they're really stingy about it. You get that application and you're all excited that you can hit apply, that you can even hit the button to apply for partner. And they won't give it to you on the first one. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, not if you're, you know, been making steady progress. Unless you've had some crazier explosive growth, I would assume maybe maybe they would do it then. But they're really, I think they look at a lot of, um, like, consistency as well. Your past months. It's not just having one really good month. Because you can get that application in, like, one good month, right? That's, like, all it takes. Because that's an automated process. Being mm -hmm. able to hit the button to apply. Nobody has to look at that. Twitch will just unlock that for you once your numbers reach the threshold. But it, once you now have to apply and you send in your application, which we can talk about, uh, then a person looks at it, in theory, anyways, and, um, and, and they will assess your channel. You'll have a human being look at you and see what's going on. Yeah, so you're saying you have to reach some bare minimum of stats to be able to submit the application, but then they have to review mm -hmm. it manually. Yeah, so for those, uh, obviously you and I know, but uh, for everyone else who doesn't know, um, there's the two, there's sort of three stages of being on Twitch. If you just have an account, anybody can have an account. You're just, I don't think you're called anything. You're just a Twitch account. And then if you start streaming and you meet some very low requirements, which is like, I think it's like 50, 50 followers, three average viewers over 30 days, and... Um, like streaming, I think it's like five days of, of a month or something like that, um, you'll get affiliate, <clears throat> which is where 99% of uh, anybody who has streamed on Twitch, that's like where if you work at, at all on it, you'll get to affiliate. Anybody can get affiliate for sure. Mm -hmm. And then if you keep streaming, and that, that's where I was, so I, I think I started streaming, then literally like a month or two later, you, I got affiliated because, you know, you have your friends watch your stream and then you just have to get 50 followers. And then once that's done, you're pretty much in the money. Um, you get emotes, you get all that stuff. People can subscribe to your channel, which is cool. Then the second, uh, the, the last stage is partnership, where those requirements are obviously a lot heftier because of everything that you were just saying. That Those requirements are 75 average viewers, which if you've ever streamed you know is can be a very difficult number to hit and it's also average so when you start up your stream and it takes you three hours to get to 70 you know on a good day that's three hours of sort of if you look at it as positives and negatives just objectively on numbers that is a normal thing that will happen to people 
you don't start your stream and then suddenly bam you're at your max viewership instantaneously um sometimes you get like a really early raid or something in your stream but all of those things don't count so a lot of people were telling me like wow i'm so shocked you're not partner anymore i feel like every time i'm in your stream you know you're over 100 viewers so raids and and the like hosts things like that do not immediately count it's not like all those people joined and suddenly now you're averaging your your average time is now at 120 or 200 viewers it is after an hour as far as i understand is when raiders will count towards your viewership in terms of partner applications hmm. so after one hour so by then most people who are not going to watch your stream will already be gone um yeah or whatever so next time you get raided somewhere so i'm sure neuro will raid at the end of his stream i'll raid at the end of my stream look at your url and you'll see there's a little link at the end of it that says refer equals raid and that's how they keep that statistic there but um anyway so 75 average viewers that's the hard thing to get the other two are just time requirements of streaming x amount of hours in the month and streaming for x amount of days for the month i think it's like 12 days and then 20 hours, which I was towards the end pulling like a hundred, like closer to 200 hours a month of streaming. I actually don't know. If that's the true. only I people who it. that boundary would apply to would be like mm -hmm. influencers who are already huge on another platform and they just need to clock in enough hours that they show Twitch that I actually right. use this platform. But you're yep. coming at it as this is your first big stab on any platform to try to build your name. And that kind of leads into the first thing I wanted to talk about, which was a little bit of lore building, which is uh, mm -hmm. you're the Goblin King. Why? What is that? Why is the Goblin what represents you? Yeah, so there's um, anytime anybody asks me that, I will follow up with a question of my own. Would you like the real answer or would you like the real, real answer? What is a real, real answer? So the real, real answer is that there was an opening in the Goblin Kingdom, and I saw an opportunity and took it. So I decided to become the Goblin King. Uh, the real answer is I was in a 7-Eleven parking lot when I was kind of getting more serious about my stream. And I was with my cousin, Hellscream, who you have met. Yep. And um, I was like, hey, man, you know, I really, I think it'd be cool to have like a theme to my channel. There was, there was, I was not always the Goblin King on Twitch. If you, if you were here in the very, very beginning, I was not a Goblin King. I was just a, just Apoptosis, 808, streaming around, doing whatever. And um, I saw that there were like really interesting and cool um, themes that people had to their streams. Pig has, you know, he's got his pig pen. He's got all of his emotes are based around pigs and all that sorts of stuff. Livy B's got the beehive. And there's a lot of other people. There's a lot of other streamers that will do that. Not everybody does it, though. You don't do it, necessarily. You have themes on, like, um, attitude and stuff like that. But you don't have, like, you know, you're the manta rays or something. I don't know. Just some random <laughs> creature, I suppose. We don't have a mascot um, animal unless you want to call, like, Brunt or something that. Correct. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So I was like, I think it would be cool to have a theme because it can leverage you some advantages. There's some disadvantages to it as well. Um, but you get like brand recognition, you can easily build off of that. So if ever I need to get emotes or new artwork or anything like that, I know that keep it with the, you know, on Goblin theme and you know, we're, we're just building up that brand even more. Um, so yeah, I decided, um, or so I was talking with my cousin um hell scream and he was actually the one who said what about goblins and he knows and we have very similar interests i would say but he knew that i am i'm super into just fantasy in general massive lord of the rings fan um much more than sci-fi i would say and we were kind of shoot, shoot stuff back and forth the reason why specifically goblins as we thought about it and decided we were kind of in the spitball stage at that point but the reason why I did decide to go with it is because um, I really like goblins for one, and then for two, I really like their the sort of um, attitude that people have towards them. They are a much more uh, sort of conniving, mischievous race. They're not overly physically extremely strong. 
They're not overly extremely intelligent. They're not really good at almost anything, but they are, they are, they're, they're cunning. They're crafty, which I saw in relation to like Zerg. Zerg is not extremely strong as per like for their units. They don't have like the most incredible spells. They have some pretty good spells, but um, that you ha you can be really cunning. You can be really crafty. You can leverage advantage like creep which is like such a sort of crafty and, and mischievous sort of mechanic, in my opinion. Um, and having a mascot, like it wouldn't make sense for me to like have a mascot that's like a, like a, like a minotaur or like a huge orc or something like that. Because as you know, I am not like physically the strongest person. I have health conditions. I have things that keep me from being like super, well, not, not that I couldn't work out and not that I couldn't exercise. Those are all things I certainly could do, but just I don't feel like I physically relate to those types of things. Um, and I just feel like, I don't know, goblins are, are way more relatable than like some super attractive looking elf or something like that. More people I think will be like goblins than they'll be like a high elf, you know? Mm. So just all of these things together made me like yeah dude goblins that's the way to go yeah and the like super short version of your health stuff you were referencing you have like half blood of an average person yeah so the most tldr way to describe it is i'm like a vampire um my body does not make enough blood or any blood at all and so every three weeks i go to a hospital and they pump blood into me but yeah that's so i'll actually i'll be doing that on this friday so but yes, I I I have half blood at best, but without um, without any medical intervention, I would have no blood and eventually perspire and ex and expire. Perspire. I think that means sweating. I don't. I I probably would sweat while I was dying. But yeah. I think another attribute of the goblin that you also represent would be a sort of tenacity and stubbornness. Mm. If you have a goal, mm. if there's something that you really want, you kind of pursue it almost with a sort of maniacal focus rather than just like oh yeah twitch partner would be nice but ah, that's hard work nah screw that like you you set yourself to the plan and then really pushed hard for it and it kind of goes back to an earlier question which is what got you onto twitch streaming stuff like what drew mm -hmm. you to the platform initially yeah, well, thank you for saying that. That's very, very nice of you. Um, and what drew me to the platform originally? Yeah, so um, in sort of Apoptosis's life, since I was like a teenager or so, well, I guess starting even from the very early days, I've always been huge into gaming. Like I'm sure literally every person that's listening to this right now is just a massive and avid video game fan. Um, and... I have always had, uh, I will call it, an affinity for technology. I went to school for computer security. Um, so I am, I would say, I suppose, a bit handier with computers than maybe your average Joe. But I've always been interested in technology, and I've always been interested in gaming. Now, that sort of put to the side. Um, but with that knowledge, I've always done a project. I've always tried to have some, like, some something that I was working on that I could just kind of tinker away at and either get good at a skill or have something at the end of it that I thought was really cool. And before I was streaming on Twitch, I was uh, I was in a band. So I was actually in a death metal band. I was the uh, lead vocalist for them for three years. We published one album. Um, I'm only on one of the songs, but I am a published musician. It's one of my claim to fames. Um, and some things happened, nothing bad with the band. I would like to still think that I'm friends with all of them, but um, I decided to leave the band because they were going in a, a bit of a different direction than me. Um, they were wanting to like tour and, you know, if, if an opportunity came up to go to like the, the mainland, cause we were in Hawaii at the time, um, they were ready to just kind of drop everything that they had in their life at the drop of a hat. Not that it wasn't a sacrifice for them, but it was a sacrifice they were willing to make. I really thought about it, and it was not a sacrifice that I was willing to make. I was in a new uh, relationship with Mrs. Goblin um, at the time, and I was also going to college. I had a job. I just recently had gotten an apartment, so I was um, committed financially 
to a whole sorts of stuff and I couldn't have just really dropped my life for six months at a time without some extreme measures being taken. Um, so I decided to just split ways. It was causing me a lot of stress. There's some other stuff happening as well, but um, those are the primary things. And I said, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna depart. Appreciate you all very much, and I wish you all the best. And I kind of enjoyed that like first initial two months of freedom, where it's like, wow, I just have all this time, and I don't have all this stuff that I've been thinking about and working on, and and now I can kind of just be a little lazy and relax and and do fun things. But like anything, when you're on vacation or whatever, you always want to kind of get back to it. You want to get back to like, okay, I'm ready to put my mind towards something now. And I'm ready to push towards something. And that's where Twitch sort of enters the, the light. I don't know what it was that made me think about doing it to begin with. But having a project or having something that I could work on um, was something I really wanted. And I saw Twitch and it was an opportunity to put my love of video games and put my love of technology um, to use. Because as you know, as a streamer, there's like so many areas of technology that you can really kind of tweak and, and tinker with and get to be a little bit more perfect than it already is. And that was really appealing to me. And also I was gonna play video games anyways. So I thought, hey, this would be a really fun and cool hobby to do. And the more I did it, the more I kind of just fell in love with it. And four years later, here we are now. So you didn't get started on Twitch with the intention of pushing for that to be a job for you? No, no, I mean, absolutely not. I mean, of course, I think a lot of people as a joke, they would go like, yeah, I'd love to just kind of sit around, play video games all day and get a whole bunch of money, you know? <laughs> so if somebody had asked me, hey, is that the job you'd like? I'd be like, yeah, sure, dude, that, that sounds great. Um, but when I started, no, that was not like, oh yeah, okay, here's my pathway, here's what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to um, make this my career. And I almost would say, not that people who maybe think that way when they're first starting, I almost think that's kind of a, I don't know, maybe setting yourself up for failure kind of way to think about it. Because you just don't know if you're going to be somebody who will be successful on this platform for a very long time. Um, you know, you, you don't know, maybe you just, maybe you're just not that type of personality, not because you're a bad person, not because you're not a likable person, but I think while there's a lot of types of people that can be successful on Twitch, I think there are some common traits between them. And I find that being successful on this platform or even just kind of scraping success um, is kind of, you have to leverage so many different angles and, and just work so hard at it. Yeah, I, um, we're going to go it, through some of them fair. here today, yeah. but I'm thinking of an analogy of mm -hmm. you think to yourself, wow, wouldn't it be so cool to just move off off the grid on my own and live in the woods and just yeah. live off the land and nature? But you're speaking as someone who's never actually been to the woods before, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but you've yeah, read about it in a book. Do. So it's kind of like that yeah. where you see some like super high tier streamer they have a crap load of viewers. They have so many subs rolling in. They say, how about that Twitch Prime? And they get a thousand subs. And it's like, yeah, I played this same video game. Why don't I do this stuff? But or maybe you're even like better than them. You know, I'm higher ranked than they are or, or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. I like to think of it as like, it's not, dude, it's not day one. It's not even month one. Cause you'll have the, you'll have that creative energy and like that drive, like the, the inspiration. Uh, but like day 286, that inspiration is not necessarily going to be there. So at that point, it's about discipline. And it's it's sometimes turning the stream on when, hey, maybe you actually don't want to stream that day. Maybe maybe there's not really necessarily a good excuse for you to not stream. Of course, we talk about, you know, you should consider your health as well. If you're tired or, or, or something's wrong, you know, you should you should always give yourself a chance to rest. But maybe there's just a day when you're feeling maybe a bit off and you'd rather just veg out and watch a movie, you kind of have to make that call yourself. But more times than not, I would say you and I probably hit that go live button because we feel the need and we feel that discipline kind of kicking in to say, hey, you know, this is what you're committed to. This is what you got to do. It's easier if you treat it like a job in a way, not to say it's not extremely enjoyable, but I tried to think of it as if I, would this be enough for me to call off like my day job? Am I sick enough or am I tired enough that I would, say, would tell my boss, hey, I'm not coming into work today? And if it wasn't, then I would probably at least stream for uh, several hours. But 
Yeah. yeah, we've talked about that a few times along your journey of mm-hmm. like X, Y, or Z happened today. I, I had this many hours of sleep. I had this health thing come up. I had to yeah. handle this extra unexpected work thing. And mm-hmm. there is a lower boundary where you should not force yourself to stream. You should actually yes. give yourself a day off, which can be tough to do. Like if I could give a percentage example, if you're feeling at 100%, you're already jazzed and motivated to stream. So that kind of takes care of itself. If you're at, yep. say, 85% and you're trying to grow your stream, you can stream. If you're at yeah. 70%, probably still stream. If you're down yeah. at like 30% of capacity, you should probably rest. So just kind of listen to your body, figure out what your own personal mm-hmm. limit is for I don't feel well enough to stream. Because if you force yourself to do it and you get into situations where you have no patience and you're already really tilted and it's going to be really unfun, that can cause you to hate the whole thing. So you're trying to find yep. what is my personal balance between getting the hours in that I want to put in versus protecting myself from bad stuff happening. Yeah, I, I think I would agree with all of that. And for your journey, yours was different than mine in the sense that I was not also juggling a part-time job. Mm-hmm. And that's something I wanted to kind of ask about in terms of the distribution of your hours and how yeah. you would manage your energy through that. So you were working and making most of your money through your existing part-time job and then mm-hmm. putting in hours with stream on the side and then just noticing that that was growing. And then at some point you made the assessment of, hey, I have enough momentum here. I could push to make this my main thing. Yeah, so um, only very recently have I only focused on Twitch 100%. Um, and I, as you know, am not working another job. I'm only doing Twitch streaming. So my day right now, I, I work on other life stuff or other stream stuff off, off camera. And then I still do my stream at night. But um, for the last four years, I mean, the entire time I was streaming, yes, I had a, I had a job with it. Uh, when I was first, to just kind of give you a super brief history, when I first was starting to stream, I was in college, and I had a very part-time job. My student loans were paying for, like, my apartment. Um, so I had, like, a like a like maybe 25 to 30 hour a week um, uh, job at the time. And then once I graduated college, I actually got a full-time job. And that was around the time, if you remember, I actually took a break from StarCraft II. Because managing a full-time job, you know, 40 hours a week, every day, now waking up at like 7 a.m. to drive to a, a job that so that you can be there by 8 a.m. And then not getting back home until 5.30 or 6 p.m. Um, that was pretty tough. So I was having a hard time enjoying streaming. I was having a hard time enjoying StarCraft 2 because it's a very intense game. And I was already going into it with just like being low energy. I didn't stop streaming but I stopped streaming StarCraft 2 for probably like five or six months. Um, and then I did eventually stream StarCraft 2 again. But to answer your question, how did I manage the energy? Well, I mean, probably to be, I mean, just to be super bluntly honest, probably I, I didn't very well. Um, I would, I had to go to my job. I had to make money. So I would wake up. I would go there. I would come back. I would either make dinner, grab dinner on the way home, or Mrs. Goblin was making something or doing the same. She was grabbing dinner on the way home. And um, I would eat that, watch a show with her, and then take a nap for probably like an hour to an hour and a half, and then wake up at 9 p.m. and start streaming. And I would stream for, when I was working full time, I would stream for four hours only. I would, I would basically only go for four hours exactly, end my stream, go to sleep for like six hours, and then wake up and do it again. Um, it was really tight. It, it was kind of like, you know, I was I'm much more of a night owl kind of person. So I was like more energized at night, and I was like, man, I really wish I could stream for longer. But I know that if I don't uh, stop streaming now, I am going to be absolutely dead tomorrow, and it's just going to screw me for the rest of the day. So that in that sense as well, it was a bit of discipline saying, hey, yeah, you could go longer. You could do this. But it wasn't at a time where I was really able to invest as much as I wanted to in Twitch. And I had to prioritize my sleep and my other sort of um, my other sort of commitments. And it wasn't until um, after I stopped streaming StarCraft 2 for like five months, I started it again and just received like, I don't know, it was like a massive 
you know, boost to my viewership and, and it was like being welcomed back to the community. And after several months of that and it's seeing consistent and going higher and higher, I made the decision to um, take a step back at my day job and go from a full time eight hour a day employee to a part time only. So I was only going to work four hours a day starting later in the day, starting at noon. This was also around the time of COVID, which was a good while ago now, if we can all believe that. Um, but we were also starting to work from home. So I actually had started working from home already. And so I didn't have a commute, which cut down on things. That was like another hour to hour and a half out of my day. That is just kind of back. So I had a lot more time. I could sleep till like 1150 so that I could work at noon and I was in my own house. So after I did like my original, like, Hey, what's up? Check on things. I could grab a snack from the kitchen where I couldn't necessarily do that at my job. Um, so that helped me out a lot. I went from streaming four hours to streaming six a night. I still had to sleep and wake up and, and do all of that stuff. Um, and I continued sort of that kind of schedule where I would stream from like 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., go to sleep around 3.30 or 4, wake up at like 11.50 or noon, like on the dot, start working until 4 or 5, and then I would still kind of take naps. I still kind of take naps every now and again. It's kind of just been baked into my schedule so much. But um, less so now than I used to. Hmm. I hope that kind of answers a bit of the question anyways. Yeah, to contrast that, my approach was pretty different. I would just YOLO my uptime for as long as I physically could. So maybe a 12 to 14 hour stream and then I would just sleep for 10 hours or however long I yeah. needed to. So my day night cycle was longer than a 24 hour period and I would just mm -hmm. hit the stream. But that was because I didn't also have another set of obligations that I had to keep up with at the same time. So I yeah. would say your approach is more difficult and it required more going back to the goblin comparison, more craftiness and more careful mm -hmm. planning about these are my edges. This is my brand. This is exactly what I'm doing. I think a lot of the branding stuff and then the, like say the subathon that you did, mm -hmm. that's focusing on some heavy hours, but you also had a bunch of different events and things that you're creating with that. So I wanted mm -hmm. to knock out just one quick question that a whole bunch of people who are curious about building a Twitch stream ask, and I don't think it's the right mm -hmm. question, but they ask it. So I'll ask you, how do you network? Yeah, man, that is a tough, like when people ask that question, it's like the most general, but I, I also understand where they're coming from. How do you network? It is a, uh, Simply to put it down is it's just go into streams and become a part of that community. At the end of the day, that's that's the answer to the question. You're not trying to be disingenuous. You're not going into a stream, um, you know, just being like, haha, I'm going to use Neuro for my own end and my own advantages here. Do you Find just like go streams. in that chat and then you say, hey, this is my channel. Check me out. No. Yeah, no, not at all. Definitely not. That's like anti-networking. That's like telling people, hey, I don't actually. That's like. So that is that is akin to taking like the short path or trying to take a short path that actually falls off into a cliff because literally no person that is that's not going to work. People people think about like you know, oh if I do like follow for follow communities which you see all the time for like new streamers, they're like, "Oh, bigger number better person. You get the you see the followers. I want to get more followers and things like that so I can grow my channel." But it's really like a not not a holistic way to do it either. And only natural kind of growth is really going to be consistent and you're going to be able to build upon that platform. So the way that I did it was literally I would, uh, yeah, I would go into other StarCraft II streams. I would hang around. I would see if I enjoyed that person's personality. Did I get along with them? Did I kind of vibe with their message? Did I like their music? You know, whatever it was and just chat become a part of that community it's really easy to do streamers really like unless you're in like possibly 1k average and above viewership the chat's not moving that fast and the streamer will notice you if you like if you chat with them and you genuinely add like good things to the conversation or you bring up stuff that's happening in the game or or whatever it is i mean you just like Streamers love good chatters. Like as somebody who is streaming is is a streamer, 
I can tell you right now, people who chat and add interesting things to conversations or start conversations, that's like the best thing because that's what streamers are looking for is a way for their community to 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 be more interesting. Um, if you just put it very bluntly at that. So if you are that person to somebody else, the streamer will notice you. And at that point, you know, then it's then it's kind of more so you have to feel out what you want to do. Um, I would say one of the people I networked with the most was you, Neuro, um, which, you know, eventually I met you at BlizzCon and TwitchCon and, and we started doing D&D. But what you're getting, like sort of the advantages you're getting from networking with other people is maybe not only catching raids, which is a really great sort of way to help your stream out, you know, get literally get new viewers in front of the camera for you. And then at that point, you have to, um, you know, you have to use your uh personality you know whatever it is to try and entertain people or give them a reason to stick around or maybe say hey i'm gonna follow this guy and if if he's streaming i'll go check him out um but then you can also open yourself up to other things if you're a long-term mod for somebody's channel maybe you have this really cool idea that you've thought out and you go hey i want to do this kind of like how we did dungeons and dragons or how we've done howls by the hearth i came to you or you came to me with like hey let's why don't we do this? This sounds like a really cool thing and work together on it. But it's not something you can do after like a week. You know, you have to genuinely care about that person, genuinely care about their success, about their stream, and then decide, hey, I'm going to reach out to them privately. Don't put them on like, don't don't ask people in chat to raid you. Don't like, I mean, don't ask people ever to raid you. Just if they want to raid you, they'll raid you or whatever or host you. Yeah, or, the way that or, I would or describe collaborate it. collaborate with you. The way I would describe it is you're building community reputation based on all of your behaviors. So what you're typing in the chat, people see that, people read that, that changes their perception of you either in the positive direction or in the negative direction. And when it comes to like networking and eventually getting some positives from that, like raids, it's mm. not good to ask for a raid or to ask no. for a promotion and that kind of a thing. But if you're around and you're consistently visible to the streamer and helping the streamer with a boss that we all have to face known as dead air, dead air sucks. Mm -hmm. And if you are in the chat and you type a line, the streamer gets to read that and they get to defeat dead air for that period of time. So even if it's not the funniest joke of all time, you're just saying hi and dropping in or whatever, that's pretty helpful. As long as you're not totally yeah. off topic and being weird, just chatting, it does help the stream a lot. And it helps a lot more than the, the follow for follow stuff. It's really oh, not God. good because usually they're trading follows from different categories that don't really intermingle with each other. So why would you actually go to one of those streams that you did a follow for follow for if they're not streaming the content that you enjoy? You wouldn't go there. Like I have a whole bunch of streams followed, but I can't watch them all at the same time. Yeah, that's something that's super important as well is everybody, I mean, there are some people that watch maybe two streams at once or or more i suppose um but everyone's time is you can't it's you know you can't divide it between each stream equally so having a follow doesn't mean it doesn't mean actually anything unless that person you know might come and view your stream it's not bad to follow a lot of streams there's nothing wrong with that um if that's what you want to do that's fine but just because you have a follower doesn't mean that that's going to be a viewer you know, uh, consistently or all the time or, or whatever it is. So how many followers just, do you need to pay rent? Yeah. Like who fucking knows? <laughs> there's no, there's definitely no number for that. But to talk about, uh, just to go back to the networking real quick, the way that I see networking, cause some people have had the opposite sort of thing where they go, you know, I, I think it's important, but I, there's no, like objective benefit that I'm seeing. There's no like number that that's going to increase immediately or even potentially you could be, that's another thing too about networking is you could be really great and, and be in this person's channel and, you know, be really awesome. And maybe they really like you, but they don't raid your channel or anything like that. Or, or you don't get any kind of pullback from that. There's much more to networking than just like, ah, what am I going to get out of it? Right because it can pay off in other ways that maybe you're not familiar with. If, for instance, this this is a literal application of what happened, is I 
was in your channel, Nero, and I saw Chicken Man in your channel, and I had recognized him many a time. I've chatted with him many a time. And one night, I was looking to raid somebody, and I saw that Chicken Man was online. And I went, oh, I didn't even know that this guy streamed, but I know him from Nero's channel. I'm going to raid his stream. And that's kind of, that's how, you know, that whole thing kind of kicked off. And, you know, from there, it was it was we were networking or we were being in your channel, whether we were like actively focused on networking or we were just wanting to hang out with a really cool person and streamer and a really cool community. But that had paid off in a way that wasn't expected. And Chicken Man's become one of my best friends since, you know, I love the heck out of that guy. And, and we've done some really fun memes and fun stuff since then. So, you know, I wasn't in Chicken Man's chat. I wasn't in Chicken Man's stream going, hey, like, what's up? Let me chat with you. But because I saw him in your stream, I looked through the list of people that I recognized none of them, and I recognized Chicken Man's name. Yep. So there you go. Hosting other people <laughs> actually ends up promoting your channel a good deal. A lot of people have hosted into me, and I didn't know they streamed, but now I know they stream, and I can mm -hmm. follow them. And if they're streaming when I finish my stream in the category, or they're just on my follower list, I can raid or host them after. And I think about a lot of times if you're trying to promote yourself, you shouldn't be mm -hmm. running around trying to ask a bunch of people for favors. You can do that somewhat, but you should also be doing favors for other people to improve your standing and to give them some value. So some reason to kind of pay you back for doing something mm -hmm. as opposed to just like hoping that people are going to choose to do stuff for you and they don't even know you. So doing stuff yeah. like being pleasant in the chat, being active in the chat, uh, moderating if you have time to help with that, uh, being mm -hmm. active in people's Discord, just engaging with whatever the streamer is doing, if they're doing replay stuff, if they're doing viewer battles and that kind of thing. All of that builds your name and gives you kind of more of a presence on the platform if you're trying to expand that for yourself. Yeah, and I do know that there are some people who who stream and and they feel really weird about kind of networking and they go man you know gosh i just i don't feel right about going into a channel and and like trying to schmoo they see it as very schmoozy or like i'm just trying to use this person and i would say no networking will work like it will not work if you go into a channel and you're purely only coming from a standpoint of what can I get the, out of this for me? That is just not really going to work. You, that like that type of mentality, you're not going to be able to kind of vibe check with the streamer and the community long enough if you don't genuinely enjoy them. Because if I was like, I'm gonna join, you know, Shroud's chat, who's a 35,000 viewer guy. And I'm going to just try and get him to raid me once or something like that. Like, obviously, that is not going to work. You know, he's like a really, really high up viewer. But that trickles down all the way to whatever viewership it was. You know, I mean, just because you're there doesn't mean like you're networking. I think that the like there needs to be a genuine like I enjoy this community and and sort of a yeah it would be awesome if i got a raid one day or i got a host or if we collaborated or something like that but that shouldn't be your main mentality with it you can go forth with the aspect of being in these channels is good networking but you using that as your only motivation to go into a channel i think it's not the way mm -hmm. it's kind of a weird thing to explain but that's my best that i can do <laughs> yeah if you genuinely want to grow the best way to market yourself is to be online and to make content that has something of value. An example would be if you do something for something in your four hour stream and you end up with a video or something after that, that was a segment that you created that you can then deliver to people as a point of value. If you wanna be a streamer, you have to think about valuing people's time and being competitive with other things that they could do with their time. So I could watch Apoptosis for an hour or I could watch a TV show for an hour and I would need a reason to watch you over some other TV show that honestly mm -hmm. has a higher budget. It do. That's a I big mean, part of why is partner, is, high, <laughs> partner is super, super hard. Not because it's hard to get set up with the stream. That's actually the really easy part. It's because it's so easy and there are so many people trying to do it and you're competing against all the other people who are more entrenched in the space than you and then all the other different things that people could do with their time. So you've yeah. really got to push. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And one edge that I think you have, and you can kind of expand on what you think your edges are to broadcast, because it's not like a, an arrogant or cocky thing about, oh, I'm better at this and this than other streamers. But if you genuinely want to grow your community and attract people and get them to choose to watch your channel over the thousands and thousands that are online at a time, why would they watch you? What are your edges as a content creator? Yeah, and that is sort of the never ending question. Uh, in my opinion, that you have to constantly be asking yourself um, and constantly be reevaluating and reassessing because I was able to achieve partner. I'm not the best at StarCraft 2. I am not able to put the most hours into Twitch compared to some other people. I maybe don't have the dankest memes on the internet, but some of these people are not partnered and I am. So they're, it's it's... It's trying to, I think, use your use your advantages, use your edges, use the things that you are good at and apply that to your stream in the best way you can. And it's probably not going to be something that you're going to figure out immediately. Um, it's going to take time. It might take you months. It might take you a year to figure out what's my edge. Why is it that people are going to view my broadcast over somebody else? Mm -hmm. Um that is yeah that honestly that's still a question i think about today some of the things i think that i have an edge for and the way that i approached it is well number one i think that i do network more or better than other people around my level so i think i have more name recognition more brand recognition for somebody who is around a 75 to 100 average viewer streamer compared to other people around that same level for me. I can go into a lot of other streams that are much sort of higher numbers, if you just look at it objectively, and call them my friend and be able to collaborate with them. I don't feel weird about asking them for, hey, do you have replays or do you have advice on this or do you think we could do coaching at some point? Mm -hmm. So that alone can be very helpful because then, as we sort of mentioned before, you catch a lot more raids, you catch a lot more hosts, which at some point there is just a, you need a raw amount of numbers to be in your stream so that maybe you have the best personality in the world. You're like one of the most creative and funny people there are, but if nobody clicks on your stream to begin with, like there's a barrier for entry right there. And as a lot of people know, Twitch is not a very good platform for being discovered on. So few people go to the StarCraft II, you know, page and go, let me find a streamer that I'm going to watch. So I would say a majority of people, maybe when you're first starting Twitch, you do that. And then after that, it's pretty much raids and hosts. And you just get like tossed around to different streams. And then you go, wow, okay, there's this person that I really gel with. And why, why would I go find another stream if they're online? You know, Neuro's online. Why would I go find another stream? I really like watching him. So networking, I think, was a really big edge for me. I do think I also plan better and I make sort of uh, more diverse content at my level than maybe other people do. What are some types um, that you deliver to your community? Yeah, so I have run um, tournaments in the past for my viewers and subscribers. I do um, replay casting, which is something that is very common and popular, but not everybody does it. Um, I think that my uh, uh, like guides, videos, tutorials, things like that that I have created have been a big sort of value add as well. Um, hmm, trying to think if there's anything else in particular that I think I'm doing maybe at a little bit better edge than others are. The number one way in StarCraft II, I think, to just like raw viewership retention is to starcraft ladder you'll mm. normally have your most amount of viewers when you're laddering but it's not necessarily going to be the most exciting content like i don't know if you're going to build as much loyalty if that's the only thing that you do you know you're you're wanting to try to hit i think a bit of a diverse edge as well where Maybe if people aren't only interested in laddering, what is their reason for coming back to the stream? You know, do you have an edge in personality? Are you really funny? Do you do a lot of other stuff? Um, 
I have always tried to run events uh, l more recently based on like subscriber count. Um, so one other piece of content that I've been doing as well is I literally made like a mechanics for a board game that I could play with the stream. And for every five subscribers I get during a stream, we'll roll on our board and that can provide a lot of stuff, whether that's giveaways or whether that's like, you know, even potentially negative things that happen. So that's like an exciting little break that can happen in the stream that people are like, you know, they're excited for. It's not like I'm trying to simply just shill out and like, yeah, give me all of your money, but it's providing sort of a, a value to like, hey, why would you subscribe to my stream over somebody else's? Maybe maybe you're interested in doing that or maybe that that is an exciting thing for you. Yeah, I think that um, community, yeah. community building aspect is about going deeper with the individual viewer where you're engaging with them on a higher level it's usually less profitable in the short term to do this but longer term you're establishing more loyalty with someone who they like getting to hang out and interact with you as opposed to just you are the big streamer who is doing stuff and they they view it but they don't participate in it i definitely agree that spamming ladder with commentary is like the best way for viewership breadth because people mm -hmm. understand this is a ladder game even if i don't like this guy maybe i get to watch him die to a cheese so they'll still watch even if they don't like you <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah the main thing that i did when i was building my stream was wow if i just spam ladder people tune in because every single match is kind of its own piece of content where it could be funny or entertaining enough to be its own video so that kind of solves itself you don't really have to do as much planning and so on well i'm going to interject just slightly here actually and i think that that plays to something that you are extremely good at as a streamer and that is you are one of the best if not the best person at improv that i know on twitch um and for you ladder matches you are much more you're much more fluid, you're much more comfortable with talking, you'll make memes, you'll press buttons that are not related to StarCraft 2 that'll do funny voices or maybe funny scenes and things like that. Your comedic timing is like really on point. And so you can take something like a ladder match and make it into this like really funny story that's unfolding in front of the viewer's eyes. But I will tell you this right now, not everybody can do that. I think that is an edge that you have that you're really fantastic at. So spamming ladder, I think for somebody like you is a really good thing. But me, for instance, I don't think I have as much improv chops as you do. I'm not saying I don't have any, but I like to sort of also plan content and be much more on that end as well. Cause I think that's what I might be a little bit better at is let me come up with this idea that I have and sort of think about this, plan this out, get this going, contact the appropriate people that I need to and that'll be like my major viewer or like my major content piece for the month or the week or whatever it is, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, I think ultimately it boils down to what is your showmanship stat? And you could get to that stat either by improv on the fly of you just entered into a situation and you make it funny or you think about it ahead of time. This would be a really entertaining segment for me to do. In either case, if you get there, you get there. And if the chat has fun, they have fun. But you need to figure out like, what tool set do I have? What are my talents? And how can I make the broadcast entertaining based on those talents? Uh, I think it ties a little bit into mastery as well, because I've probably clocked in thousands more hours of just playing Zerg than you have. So oh, that yeah. means 100%. that the Zerg stuff for me, I can kind of go on autopilot and say, 80% play StarCraft and then 20% focus on being funny and talking. Mm -hmm. So as you continue to improve, then you'll be able to kind of just make up shit on the fly and make it really funny as well. And that kind of leads into the next thing that I wanted to talk about, which was mastery and skill and how that's a big part of building a StarCraft stream in particular. Like your ranking and stuff is all visible in there all the time. And you've improved quite a bit since you started streaming. I just pulled up your uh, profile summary. You're 4.7 right now, which is not too far off GM. Like that could be maybe 100 MMR off day one GM or so. Woo! Yeah, we're close, boys. Yep. Um. So what was the question exactly? Just improving at StarCraft 2 or yeah, how do you StarCraft? Or? How do you balance improving at StarCraft and improving the stream with all the other stuff at the same time? 
What is your improvement um, method, so to speak? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So there, I think that when you're streaming StarCraft 2 and you've reached a point where you do decide, hey, I really, really want to focus on being a good streamer. Being a good streamer and being a good StarCraft 2 player are certainly not necessarily the same thing. You can be an extremely good StarCraft 2 player, uh, but you could be a, a really not great streamer. And that, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so there is a little bit of both. And I think it is about what are the edges that you can have in both of those domains. So if you think about it as a Venn diagram, you can improve a lot of things about your stream while not being live. In fact, there's a there's a great number of things that you can do to make your stream quality way better when you're not live, when you're not actively playing StarCraft 2. Um, one of, I think, the most goaded moves I think I've ever made is connecting with a, um, my artist that I use for my stream, Netherbat Art, who has done all of our goblin emotes, all of my all of my artwork, that period, that I use for my stream. Um, and using that and having just like a bit of a higher quality emote than maybe other people around my level, a more interactive and fun, uh, like over screen when I'm not in the game, there's like a whole lot of different elements. If you've ever seen my goblin cave that I have, um, there's a whole bunch of different things using that and, you know, offering stuff like a channel point reward that'll allow people to literally add their own goblin to my, to my cave that they design and my artist creates, you know, that's a money investment. None of that necessarily immediately um, will pay off. Like, like, oh, you, you just spent 25, $30 making this emote. Here's $50 in return immediately because of all these people that want it. But that it just improves sort of the qual. If you think of your stream in terms of almost like a World of Warcraft item, you know, you, you have like your, your trash quality grays, you've got your common white, you know, you've got green, rare, and, and then blue, purple, and then legendary. And all of these little adjustments that you do to your stream, all of this little bit of time that you invest or, or maybe even money that you invest to elevate the quality of it, I think people see that and people really appreciate that. Having a good camera, having a good microphone, having good lighting, having a really nice chat setup, having smooth transitions, all of these things you can do off camera. Um, not to say that when you start streaming, you need to have every single one of these perfected. No, you can start off with a kind of shitty webcam and shitty microphone if you even have one with no extra lights other than just your room lights with one monitor, you know, and you look at the chat on your phone maybe and no emotes, but like maybe you just take a quick crop of your face or something like that. Like that, none of those things are wrong, but these are things that you can do off camera. Um, as far as improving at StarCraft 2, I mean, that's a whole nother beast on itself. I think that StarCraft 2 is probably one of the, while most extremely difficult games to improve at, it is also, I, I think there's a lot of extremely good tools to improve at it. It is very glaringly obvious where your problems are, um, or at least where some of the problems are. Maybe that's not like the biggest issue that happened in a game. Uh, but like you can even having a replay mechanic. Let me just start there. There are many games out there that you only get one shot to view and that's while you're playing it. There is no way unless you're recording it or you're streaming it and you go back in your VOD. There's no way to see what you did that was correct, what you did that was wrong. Um, one thing that comes to mind is Overwatch does not have that mechanic really, or maybe they do now, but I haven't played it in years, but there was a time when I, I was playing Overwatch on stream and I literally stopped playing because I was frustrated because I wasn't sure if what I was doing was correct. Was I doing the right thing as the role that I was picking in the game? Was I doing the wrong thing? I had no way to really determine that. I had no way to really know. Um, whereas in StarCraft two, if you understand at least some of the basics about the game and you look back through the replay, you can go, yeah, I was supply blocked here at 30 supply for, you know, 25 seconds. That's obviously a mistake. That's not what I'm supposed to do. And you can take that into the next game and have sort of a game plan. Um, now, sort of the higher level you get, a lot of people still make mistakes about the basics. I still make basic mistakes literally probably every single game. But that's where you can then also try and recruit other people into helping you. Um, 
whether that's maybe some high ranked people that are in your Twitch chat, maybe you join a clan on StarCraft 2, you get involved with them. Uh, one thing that seems pretty synonymous with a lot of people that play StarCraft 2 is people like to help other people improve. Um, it's not everybody, but a lot of people do. A lot of people are down to do custom games. A lot of people are happy to look at replays. So long as it's not taking up hours and hours and hours of their time, people are usually pretty pretty receptive to going, hey, this is probably where you, what you went wrong. And do you know why that um, is? Why is that? It's because people really enjoy feeling smart. And if you ask them yeah, how something true. works in a game of skill and they get to teach mm -hmm. you something, they get to feel smart for that entire duration. Yes. And that's worth it. That's true. That's why when Absolutely. you make a post on all things Zerg, all things Terran, all things Protoss, and you say, I lost this game, I don't know what to do, a bunch of people <laughs> have their take and they can help you out. And since there are so many people who are actively playing and they're in Diamond or Masters or GM, you have a lot of voices mm -hmm. who could give you some really good feedback. So that's, I think, a big motivating factor for why people are so generous with their help in this community is you get to feel smart for a bit of time to help someone. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, and, I'm dying to and, mass mine. What do I do? Oh, you just get range hydras. They can shoot them without the mines going off. Yeah. Big brain. Yeah, I, I definitely think that hitting that I get to be smart button is, is kind of a nice motivator for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um. And one last thing I was going to say is there's a ton of resource material to learn as well on YouTube. There's a ton of content creators. I know that you have done it. I have done it. Vibe's done it. Pig's done it. Almost every StarCraft II streamer I can think about has released videos on YouTube that are going over some core mechanic or mistake or type of matchup or build order, things like that. Um, and sort of giving you the ins and out of it so that you don't have to come up with these things on your own and you can piggyback off of the work that somebody has done already. And then the last thing you can really do, um, which can be to great, great benefit, is personalized coaching. Um, if you do, I've done that for at least probably, I would say 10 to 15 hours, probably more depending on how much of the coaching you'd consider for me and you because you've definitely helped me out with a lot of stuff probably more actually um of just having somebody either watching me play or going over a replay with me or hey man i'm having a hard time like you said with you know with with widow minds can you look at these replays and tell me what i should have done instead um and getting somebody's one-on-one -on -one perspective when you know that maybe they're particularly good at the matchup one thing that recently comes to mind um, with you <clears throat> is ZVP. Your ZVP win rate was like something really high. I don't know what it is right now, but I remember it was like in the 60 percentages in a time where uh, Zergs are dying to the first Void Ray of Protoss. Um, and I was like, and I'm still not in a fantastic spot. I'm, I think I'm still in 40%, something like that. But I was dying to Void Rays. I was dying to all sorts of stuff. So um, you were like, hey, man, you should try to do this queen walk. Let me show you how to do it. Let me show you what you should be aiming for. This is how it should go. And I have become, I think, pretty darn good at it. I'm still not the best, of course, but, you know, it's helped me out quite a lot. But you can win games in ZVP now. I can definitely win games in ZVP now. Nice. Yeah. I can definitely still lose games, too, but I can definitely uh, win games. <laughs> Yeah, and so I guess you could say that one of your major next goals that looms ahead that you could take a stab at would be getting GM. And you're not super yes. far off. Yeah, it's definitely... Um, right now, I'm sort of still definitely bathing in the light that is becoming a very more uh, recent Twitch partner. Um, that's still something that I'm really incredibly happy about and I'm still riding the high of. But I am still thinking of okay what's the uh what's the next thing that i want to do because the wheel doesn't stop here you know i didn't make it to the end of where i want to be um while this is a massive milestone and i'm very proud of this accomplishment and and i i really am so thankful that i've been able to do this and get this far um <clears throat> i still feel like i'm just starting my stream and i'm just still just beginning and there's still this this giant mountain that's in front of me but that's not necessarily a scary thing. That's an exciting thing because um, there's still so much of the journey to do. So I'm still working out. What's the next thing I want to do for my stream? I think uh, I think I'm going to put a lot of time and motivation and energy into improving at StarCraft 2 
recently I put in a lot of time and energy into hitting Twitch partner, you know, and just really hitting my Twitch metrics and hitting uh, hitting all the buttons that I could so that Twitch would notice me and, and give me that goddamn purple check mark. And so now I think I owe it to some StarCraft 2 and, and to get that orange border. Because I think orange borders would go really nicely with purple check marks, you know? That would look sick. Yeah. And one of the fun things, too, if you get into GM and you're in the bottom of GM, but you're still in GM, then you get to mm -hmm. see the promotion screen every day that you're in that span. Yeah. <laughs> we got GM yeah. again! I just got it yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Celebrate every day. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't wait. I can't wait. I believe that you can do it. It also requires more of the try hard focused investment of time, which honestly isn't the most accessible and interactive content. Like if you're try hard streaming and your microphone is muted, you're not interacting. So the showmanship score mm -hmm. goes down quite a bit. It's definitely something that certain viewers will appreciate. And a lot of people, they'll say they're inspired whenever they see someone really pushing themselves and trying to improve at something that gives them motivation mm -hmm. in their life. So there's value there for sure, but it's not the main breadwinning content of just spamming ladder games with commentary mm -hmm. kind of a deal. So now that you have the check mark, all of that weight of, I need to have a 75 plus viewership average, that's been lifted. Like you could dip below yep. that for a little bit and they're not gonna take your check mark away in the night. <laughs> You're, yeah. you're set. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, it definitely having the check mark and what that means, it's sort of more so while there are some objective benefits to it, having more emote slots, having higher quality options, having priority encoding, uh, being able to do some partner only stuff, and then having the, the, the clout and the ego booster that is a perfect check mark. There's no, I mean, those are, those things are all really great. But it's certainly not the end of the end of the road. Um, but one of the things, exactly like what you were saying, is being able to not have to be so concerned with every single stream being the most like net positive viewership as possible. I can afford myself to branch out into some other content every now and again as well, while using StarCraft II as my sort of home base and anchor. There's nothing wrong with hey, you know, every once in a while, if you want to stream a different game. Because as everybody, as a lot of people know, if you when you're streaming, if you do sort of branch out on your content, if you're kind of known for one game, just simply branching out is going to lower your viewership at least for a little while when it comes to streaming a different game. Because there are some people that are really only interested in, in StarCraft 2. It's not that they maybe don't like you, or maybe it's not even that they don't like that game that you're playing, but they just sort of, they really like watching StarCraft 2, so they're just going to find a, uh, you know somebody that is streaming StarCraft 2 at the time. You soften but that this... comment a little bit. I would like to adjust that. If you stream outside okay. your main game, your metrics will yeah. be trash. They'll it be is, like yeah, a okay. tenth, maybe <laughs> half, okay. if you're lucky. Okay, <laughs> okay fair yeah, enough. If you're a StarCraft streamer, say you stream. get the 75. If you stream Dota only and start with Dota only, you're going to have like 5 to 20 most, right? Yeah, that's true. It's really low. Like, so if you're trying to push that metrics, uh, one thing that you did that I know, but for the purpose of the interview, you would mm -hmm. use sub only mode, which you did catch some flack for. And then yeah, I did get some flack for that. Yeah. You made a second Twitch account. I did. Why did you do I that? I did. Yeah. So I, <laughs> it, 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 this kind of, if I could take a dig real quick at, at Twitch, because doing this was, it seemed like the most backwards thing to me personally. Um, if, when I think about, when I think about streaming, I, I, I feel like having somebody online more often is going to be better for a business in total. And so the way that Twitch handles their partnership and the way that those sort of viewer metrics work, while I understand there needs to be some sort of like, you know, approval process and some minimums that you need to hit, the way it is set up does not encourage you to branch out it more so encourages you to stay in your lane and like, okay, you're known for StarCraft 2, spam StarCraft 2 uh, and only StarCraft 2. Because like we said, if I streamed World of Warcraft on the weekends, which is something that I have been doing now that I have partnership, um, yeah, my viewer metrics would go down to like 15, 20, 30, something like that. And you'll get people that are like, dude, you shouldn't care about your viewer count. You should just enjoy this process of streaming. And that's all well and good, and there's nothing wrong with that mentality either. But certainly if you've set yourself a goal and you're trying to hit it, and you're getting really close every single time, 
I don't think that jumping through a few extra hoops for a limited amount of time um, is necessarily the worst thing in the world. So the alternate account. So yes, sub only mode, and then eventually the alternate account, which is called B Poptosis. I wanted to stream World of Warcraft on the weekends. I wanted to stream our raids that we're doing and use this content, uh, like creativity, hang out with people and have a bit of a more relaxed um, day of streaming where StarCraft 2 is very intense. The game is very time consuming. And when you're in the middle of a 10 minute game, maybe you're not the most accurate of reading Twitch chat at the time. So you don't feel like you're necessarily doing a good job as a streamer where World of Warcraft while it's very interactive, while there's a lot of things going on, you have a lot of opportunities and time to look at your chat. So it can be a really fun type of game to stream as well. Um, but my viewer metrics were going really, really, really far down. I was getting probably, like you said, anywhere between 5 and 20, depending on the day. Um, and if in purely objective terms for getting partnered, uh, that's really bad. If you if you have streams that you're doing and you're not even hitting 75, you can consider all of those hours as, again, just in terms of hitting Twitch partnership, not necessarily in terms of anything else, as like negative hours, sort of docking time from your total time you've put in for the month. So you want to try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, so I decided to create a second Twitch account and stream my World of Warcraft content on that account instead. Um, and I would still post to Discord that I was going live. I'd still let people know. So the people who did want to come and hang out, I would get around the same viewership anyways, uh, would, would just join a different Twitch channel. That's all. Hmm. And now that I have partnership, I don't care. So I just stream it on my main account now, and it doesn't affect me at all. It doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> yeah, so a word to the wise for people who are looking to hit those kind of metrics is you want to figure out what is the viewer's expectation when they tune into my channel because you have some main content that you make. And say you're a StarCraft streamer, use an analogy, you're a burrito store. And people show up at your store when they're hungry for a burrito. They go through the store doors and they walk in and they're like, hey, I would like to get a burrito with steak and black beans and cheese and some veggies. And they're like, sorry, it's pancakes today. <laughs> if you're streaming a different game and you're like, I, I really wanted a burrito. That's why I came here. There's a pancake store next door and they have way better pancakes because they make them all the time. That's basically what you're doing if you're a StarCraft streamer and you just have WoW on. Because yes. they're like, yep. maybe I played WoW in the past, but you have some small percentage of your overall viewership of people who would actually stick around for that content. And I would say it's like less than 30%. Yeah, you'll have people that will enter your... Sh so to use that burrito store mentality, which is so fucking perfect for this, actually. You'll have people that will come to your burrito store, even if you're serving pancakes, because they like the owners of the store. And they're going, yeah, you know what? I, 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 like, I just like hanging out in the store. And then you'll also get a very small percentage of people that walk into the burrito store wanting a burrito, seeing that you're serving pancakes instead, and going... Okay, I, you know, pancakes are fine. I'll go with pancakes. You sort of change their mind on the spot. But um, yeah, I, I, I would say that that is entirely accurate. Wow, that is such a good way to put it. Oh my God. I and then it. you have some people who will go full Karen and get very mad at you and lecture yes. you about how you should never how, do this. Yeah. How and how you're disloyal you to the community mm -hmm. because they they need to have their burritos. And if you're not making burritos, then they're gonna to starve to death and die in the streets. Yep. So you do have to have some resilience too, as a creator where you can't make the perfect content for every viewer all the time. You're gonna have mm -hmm. some silly moments where people start some crap in your chat. I'm sure you've had to ban people along the way and then what? create a create a network of moderators to have your back mm -hmm. when shit hits the fan. Shout out to Epic Failure, the most long-term mod I've had in my channel who has handled most of the bannings. And especially, I think, in the StarCraft II ROTS category, any sort of category where you have to focus a lot on the game. And again, maybe you can't read chat every single message as it comes in every time. Having a, you know, like you said, a network of moderators is really, really important. 
but it's something that sort of will naturally happen. So I don't think it's something you need to really like freak out about. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna stream StarCraft Two. I gotta, I, I have to find a mod or something like that like, immediately. No, you, you know, most people, 99, 95 percent of the people that come into your stream, are are very nice, are very kind, and they're going to be there to support you. And so if you notice that there are people who are there more regularly, more often, don't miss a stream, or maybe they're, you know, whatever, they're, they're really, really vibe well with the community that you're trying to establish, and you give them a moderator sword and you say, hey, man, you know, if you see anybody, no pressure, but if you see anybody that's causing a ruckus or spamming links or, you know, hey, you want to buy followers, you want to be famous, you can, if you could just ban them, that would be really nice. Um, and then, yeah, you just sort of organically, once again, organically build that up. Yep. And one thing we've kind of covered most of my talking points, but I wanted to round off with the different kinds of content that you are now as a partner free to make without your metrics being totally fucked. So aside from Starcraft, which by the way, tune into Apoptosis on his GM climb. It's one of the most hype moments of any gamer's career. I would say that my initial GM promotion that was yeah easily the biggest achievement either between academia or athletics it felt like the biggest moment for me so i'm really? looking forward to you getting to enjoy that yeah i was like throwing things and bouncing off the wall and <laughs> it was, it was a super time. exciting time well you're reaching such a high level of skill in such a sweaty yeah. community it's, it's true it's not uh, like you're going I'm... into some dusty game where people don't care like there are people who have been NA ladder GM for a really, really long time, and you're gonna have to go visit them and fight them and win. Mm hmm. No, I'm, I, I really am excited, and, and the climb is, is really enjoyable as well. And, and I do feel, damn, I'm so close, and, and hopefully gonna get that very soon. Um, but to answer your question, so yes, yeah, StarCraft 2 is still gonna be certainly my main um, genre, my main category, still my main game that I'm going to be playing. Um, but yes, I do have a little bit more leniency to branch out a bit. And right now I've sort of been just kind of, I'm much more of a schedule type of person, kind of like how we've been talking about. I think I've just been trained that way through, um, how I've had to be successful in Twitch is plan things, schedule things, get things going. Um, so I have been recently sort of just enjoying the pleasantries of, Hey, maybe I can take just an unscheduled Dota 2 day with Neuro and Grimmy or, or whatever or or drop it at the end of the stream or something like that. Um, so definitely I think I'll be doing some Dota 2 every now and again. I usually will only really play Dota 2 with my friends. Um, so I don't really ever plan on probably doing that alone. I think it's a really good piece of content to do when your friends are playing it or when your friends are down for it. Um, one thing that I am very excited for in the... Um, near future is next week a game called Elden Ring comes out one of my um, most favorite developers of video games from software who is responsible for the Dark Souls franchise Bloodborne, Sekiro I talked to you about that a little bit as well um, it's coming out with a new sort of more open world Skyrim looking type of game um, with the same sort of base of, of Dark Souls and Sekiro and, and, from, and Bloodborne which if you're familiar with those um, those games, you know exactly the kind of feel I'm, I'm talking about. Anyways, that's coming out next week. And I had set myself sort of a, um, not necessarily a goal, but like, hey, I would, man, I really want to stream that. I think that would be such fun content to bring to everybody. I'm really excited for that. But, I, you know, in January, I was thinking to myself, man, if I'm not partner, I'm just not going to do it because I'm just so focused on these viewer averages right now, and I really just need to be disciplined and dedicated to hitting that as hard as I can until I do finally get this check mark. Well, we got it last week, so there's nothing that's gonna stop me from streaming that game when it comes out next week on the 25th, I think, or something like that. I, no, it's before that, anyways. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stream uh, Elden Ring, and I'm probably gonna stream it for a very, very long time on the launch day. Um, Beyond that, I haven't necessarily planned anything. World of Warcraft on the weekends are still something that I think are going to stay. Those are really nice, cozy, sort of comfy streams um, that are, you know, it's just a really fun piece of content. And it's something I was going to be doing anyways. So um, being able to sort of 
do some you know this isn't like a, a change up in my schedule it's just i'm turning on a camera and i'm turning on my stream when i'm doing it yeah for people who don't um, know apoptosis yeah. plays rogue in our wow guild creation and he's our loot master so you get to see all the fancy things that drop and you get to hear him mm -hmm. say shut the fuck up i'm doing loot yeah which is a highlight of our <laughs> yeah. raids and he's also first up for War Glaives of Azanoth too. So Yay. if you like legendary items and you want to see a PogChamp moment, maybe he'll get lucky and get one of those. Sooner rather than later, I hope. Last poop been with Brunt since day one. Yep. Yeah, you can stream uh, it now. It. And maybe some DGen Dota times too with your friends like you were saying. DGen Dota times, World of Warcraft on the weekends and maybe even during the week sometimes. Um, I think kind of... One thing that I uh, that I am I think afraid of doing, or maybe a little like, okay, I don't want to go too far off the deep end on this, and I think it's one of the not pitfalls of getting partner necessarily, but one of the like knee jerk reactions of, hey, I don't feel like I'm like I only have to stream StarCraft two now because I've been so focused on these numbers. I'm just gonna go wild and I'm gonna stream a whole bunch of different games all the time. This is still, at the end of the day, this is my job. This is my primary source of income. And I know that, you know, hey, I, I'm not going to be able to hold those numbers if I only now stream Dota 2 or if I only stream World of Warcraft. Wait, 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 wait. So I'm looking. You're saying that after Twitch Partner, you're not, like, rich now. Well, besides the um, $15,000 check that Twitch sends you in the mail, they really don't give you any sort of other money. It's crazy. $15,000 check? Yeah. As a signing bonus? Well. Signing bonus, man. Yeah, didn't you get one? <laughs> no, you know, you're definitely not rich. Um, I don't know exactly the things I can talk about, but it doesn't change a lot, let's say, for um, your income. It does, actually, it doesn't really change anything at all immediately, I don't think. Yeah, you're not suddenly earning more revenue as soon no. as you get the check mark. You kind of have your existing stats and now you've unlocked some additional features, but it's not as though you're yes. now like you hit the big time. Yes, exactly. So it's a it is a very good achievement. It is a very good progression reward. And it is something that is only beneficial for you, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily change any key components or mechanics to your stream immediately. And that's something to keep in mind. So I think the next steps for me, GM in StarCraft 2 is one thing I'm going to be working for very hard. There are some other exciting things that I'm working on as well. Um, I, it is public now that I am one of the monthly hosts of the Pylon Show. So I am helping um, not only to do my episodes, but other episodes with Cobra Venom. Um, so very excited to be working on that as well. And yeah, I, I'm trying to find where are the edges that I can allow myself and feel comfortable with just going, hey, I'm gonna go and stream something else today. And I think giving myself maybe a day of the week, like maybe Friday nights or something like that, where I go, maybe we'll play some StarCraft II for a while, but a majority of the stream is going to be in a different game. That kind of keeps it contained, but also gives me the freedom to explore some other stuff that I think will be, um, sort of beneficial for me because i think at some point every streamer wants to branch out their content at least a bit i you know they're not that like starcraft 2 is a bad game by any stretch of the imagination but i know very very few people that are only interested in starcraft 2 and that's it you know everybody has like some other game that they like to play whether that's like a moba like league of legends or dota 2 maybe some single player game you know so I think that having that ability now and that freedom to to go for and, and, and stream other types of content will be good for your channel too, because it's like, hey, you're hitting maybe some different, some different kind of viewership that maybe you wouldn't normally, or people who wouldn't normally click on your stream or right into your stream or, or hang around for that day will come in and see like, hey, I really love that game too, something like that. Yeah, I'd say it's also generally wise to mix up what you're doing a little bit to make sure that you're consistently having fun because if you yes. tie yourself down to a task too much and you start hating it then you're not very fun to watch right. you're kind of like slogging through something that you know you ought to do but your heart's not really in it so if you can yeah. cut maybe one to two hours of your main bread and butter game and mix in something else that you really want to play at the time and you're excited and having fun yeah your metrics will go down but if you enjoy the process more than 
that can also kind of drive you back to StarCraft a little bit more. I would say a, a big plus in my longevity and love for StarCraft and Zerg is playing WoW because I'll play mm -hmm. WoW or I'll play another game and then I'll be like, man, this just, it doesn't give me enough buttons to push. It's not fast enough. And I'll be like, I want to <laughs> play StarCraft. So yeah. variety is good for many things, but not getting that 75 year average as we learned. No, I think that, yeah, variety can serve to refill your energy cup in a way. Mm. Playing other games can refill your energy and excitement for other games, if mm. that makes sense. You're, you're, if you look at, if you think about it like batteries, playing World of Warcraft will drain a little bit of my World of Warcraft battery, but will refill my StarCraft II battery in the, for the exact same, for the exact reasons that you just said. You know, you're, you're not playing it actively, and so you're kind of like, man, it's a lot of fun. Maybe you forgot about the last time you got cheesed by Protoss or something like that, and. You go, man, I, I feel like I could have a really good StarCraft 2 day, and you get more excited to play that. So mm -hmm. mainlining StarCraft 2, eight hours a day every single day, I don't think is the way to go. Um, so I think uh, definitely I'm going to be weaving in some planned other types of content, figuring out what that is exactly. Not sure, but I am excited to focus on the stream in a way. And, and it's weird to say that because partnership Get, trying to go for that and trying to get that almost feels like I was focusing on getting that that like average to the highest so it was almost a mini game of how do I you know how do I have the highest amount of viewers possible while still having a good stream now there's no necessarily metric that I'm shooting for there's no like partner plus that I'm going for so it's up to you what your goals are and what your next thing that you want to try to work on are. And that's both exciting and a little bit spooky at the same time, to be honest with you, because it was a little easier to go, oh, well, this is my goal, obviously, going for partner. That makes sense. But now it's going, okay, well, you're good enough now. You can figure out your own shit from here. And then you go, okay, well, what is that going to be for me? Is that, Am I trying to hit a certain subscriber amount? Am I trying to, you know, things like that in terms of Twitch streams? Yep. Uh, so say yeah. we all, what do I do next? That's a big <laughs> yeah, question. Exactly. I was very relieved when you got the Twitch partner because I said something which I don't say to very many people. Apoptosis asked me long ago, do you think I could be a Twitch partner and I, or a full-time streamer? And I said yes mm -hmm. to him, which meant that if he didn't actually make it, then I would have that tarnishing my conscience for the rest of my life of telling some <laughs> sad soul in the world that he could do it when he actually did not have the chops. But it turns out he did. Well, and that means I'm an excellent talent scout and I'm gonna put that on my resume. <laughs> you should, look at that. Your first, your first person and already successful, my friend. Um, no, I mean, in a very, very real way, um, you know, Twitch partnership, everybody congratulates you and only you. And and yeah, at the end of the day, I did do it. I, I got there, I, I made the moves that I needed to, I you know, whatever that might be. But it truly, 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 I, I just so feel that, like there's no way I could have done this without so many people's helps. Like with, you know, Mrs. Goblin's help, my, my partner that I have in life cheering me on, supporting me behind the scenes in so many ways. Um, I have such an amazing network of friends. You are at the top of that list as somebody that not only I see as a mentor, but are my best friend and have just given me the encouragement. Sometimes when you're doing this, man, you just in, in it in and maybe you had a bad stream. Maybe you felt like you were doing such a good you're doing such a good job that day, but things weren't working out or something happened. And just having people that you can go to and saying, Hey, you know. Am I doing something wrong? Should I change something up? And just being able to have that sort of clarity of mind, it almost feels like a cheat code in a way. But yeah, so big thank you to you, man, because uh, you were a massive reason why I did pursue this and I felt like I had the confidence to do it. Um, it's not all just built in, uh, built in confidence, you know? Sometimes, sometimes you're not confident and it takes other people rallying you or maybe you just have to believe in them and ignore your doubts uh, for a little while until uh, till your your own confidence can catch up with it. Yeah, I would say the main factors that gave me that confidence to say that you can do it would be you have a very gregarious personality where it you just make people feel welcome and not judged, which 
is a lot more than can be said about a lot of people who stream and then mm -hmm. the consistent showmanship of like making sure something is happening making sure that you're like keeping the the show on the road and then also being mm -hmm. uh not easily discouraged by stuff going wrong i've watched a lot of your streams where you're actually having a really shit time like it's bad games <laughs> into bad games you're getting sniped for hours and hours and you consistently yeah. would just continue pushing forward you would be grumpy and you'd be visibly grumpy but it would be a measured grumpy where you don't throw your community under the bus you make sure that everyone knows what you're upset about and that you're going to continue to push forward and that kind of courage and dedication i think is where a lot of streamers will just break and then fall off the horse kind of a thing where they they want the end result of i want to be a full-time streamer i want to be a twitch partner mm -hmm. but you have to really ride out those shit days it's not just about the days when you have some big host or some awesome piece of content that's like one of the best things you've ever made those are like your hilltop moments but you also have to push through the valleys and the shit which definitely happen yeah i actually recently talked to somebody about this um and sort of my view on hey you know if you want to be sort of in this space whether you're a content creator or you're an artist or you're you know an editor or whatever who, whoever you might be um and about like what is that drive that keeps you going and and why are you able to continue doing that because sort of talking about um the same thing that we were talking about before inspiration and like motivation when it happens um it's very easy to stream it's very easy to create content when you have the energy and that creativity maybe you got that fat rate or maybe you got a huge host or maybe you're really excited about a new project or a new patch or something like that that's coming out for the game that you play it's super easy to stream then because you have like all this stuff that you can draw on and all this content but when it's like day you know 615 and there's not necessarily something new going on and maybe you're not having the most fantastic day it's the discipline to keep going that you need to draw on because you you can't rely on inspiration alone to create content you cannot rely on that like really energetic feeling only because if you do that you're you're not going to have the motivation to stream you're not going to you're not going to click that button and you're not going to be able to provide a consistent I mean, I, I talk about it in such like objective terms, but a, a consistent product that you're putting in front of your viewers that that's what people are looking for. Maybe, you you know, people understand that you're just a mortal, right? I'm a goblin. You're a human. Um, but you're, you're not going to be on your A game every single day. You're not going to be perfect every single day. You're going to have off days, like you said, or maybe you're being sniped or maybe something bad's going on. And people will understand that, but they won't understand a complete disassociation from what your brand and what your sort of key points are as a streamer those need to remain consistent as mm -hmm. much as possible um and i think that's a really big deal if you are a sort of what's the best word i can kind of put towards this shaky sort of streamer where you're changing up a lot of things or your your personality is very different from stream to stream even if you're having kind of a bad day you want to try to hit that median as much as possible. When you're really happy and excited, your personality is going to reflect that. But where is your personality going to be when maybe you're feeling a little bit negative? Maybe you're feeling a little bit frustrated or unhappy even. Um, how far is that going to rubber band to the other end? And what is that? what does that streamer look like? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would go to the A game, B game, C game comparison with that and your a game it's already good you're on fire you're having a good time you don't really need to focus too much like you already have the fire your b game mm -hmm. i think is a really key area where people should learn to like identify like i'm having an average day and i'm going to try to make my average day a really consistent deliverable for my chat and then your C game is basically you identify that you're having a weird or an off or a bad day and you want to make mm -hmm. that tolerable for your existing community yes. <laughs> where they can survive it and you're not gonna get people unfollowing because you just like were really mean to them or whatever or you just like yeah. yeah go off on somebody because you're upset about something else so 
Yeah, having those expectations about yourself sort of pre-planned as much as you can. I mean, again, you are you can't be a perfect person where you're going to have the perfect response to everything that's going on in your life. But one thing that, and I think I drew this from you or, or really got this opinion or idea from you was, hey, when you're, you know, when you're on sea game day, when it's, when, when you really want to, even if you're like your energy and your mood is like, man, I'm dude i'm so motivated i'm so excited i can't wait to play starcraft 2 like i just feel like i'm doing good but then you start playing and you're shitting the bed everybody just feels like they're playing way better than you are you don't necessarily feel like you're playing terribly but that's where you need to identify hey you know maybe this is a c game day and you need to switch up your gears a little bit because if you put yourself at the expectation oh i'm gonna climb a bunch i'm gonna get a whole bunch of mmr um that is more than likely not going to happen and is just going to lead you down a further path of frustration. But if you treat those days as learning moments and improvement days where, hey, I'm losing. I am I am getting destroyed. I, I'm losing every single game that I play. Or I'm getting sniped 15 games in a row by the same guy who's trying to tilt me off the edge of the earth or make me super frustrated. I know that that happens and it is a very frustrating thing. And it's happened to me frequently, I would even say, but taking the time to sort of look from an outside perspective and, and tackle that with a, with a, a sense of calm and as much grace as you can, and maybe use those as moments of, well, this is where I could have improved. Let's look at that replay. Not only does looking at replays, is that beneficial for your StarCraft 2 content? But if you're trying to hit a certain amount of hours streamed, watching every game that you play once or twice, again, will also add minutes to your stream. And maybe maybe you're not in the most, like, I don't want to hit that StarCraft 2 ladder button, but I want to still stream and I want to provide a really good stream for other people. So I'm going to look over all these replays as well. Yep, so. it's making me think of all the stream cheaters and snipers who tried to get you off the horse but you just kept streaming again the next time and yeah, he made it now I mean, yeah something you said about how those people are predominantly people who want to try to essentially cut the line of feeling uh good about themselves and instead of putting in the hours of work dedication the money the just the creative process that's involved in streaming and building a community um they kind of see you with a successful stream and they want to snipe you so that they can have sort of some sort of superiority feeling and and sort of get a i would call it not even necessarily a similar type of feeling but just sort of hit that superiority complex button where it's like, ah, I'm beating this person, lol, I'm better than them. I could do what they're going to do. I could do what they're doing if I wanted to, but not really putting any any skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the I, I could do it if I tried mindset. Yes. It's, uh, it's very seductive because it doesn't require any of the effort of building something unique and beautiful for yourself. You can just fantasize about it and see someone else who's actively in the trenches, in the shit, like trying to make a, a mud house with really crappy materials and it's just hell mm -hmm. for them but you could beat them once in a ladder game and say well i could be on team root i could be a streamer if i wanted to mm -hmm. yep well big I congratulations man yeah. you have made it a bro. long ass way but the the journey continues from here it's not as though you're going to hang up the hat now that you have the check mark you're going to go back to work and today you're doing what try hard we're doing try hard starcraft 2 after this call you're just trying to say as many words in this discord call as you can before you shut it off i'm yeah i'm i'm doing everything i can i'm getting my words per minute high so that my my wpm average for my stream is still consistent and that 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 number doesn't drop off even though i'm about to mute my microphone for the next five or six hours hell yeah man i am super proud of you i'm glad you got the achievement i was kind of looking forward to buying you a drink if you got your seventh rejection and like giving you a heart to heart and trying to encourage you. And I was already thinking of what to say because that would be really yeah. tough. I know rejection sucks, but you got in on the sixth. Heck, can we easy, did. Dude. We got the easy street, boys. Yep. Um, one last thing. I, I know we're winding it down, but one thing I'm going to just post in your chat and my chat. I made a video today, which I think you've already watched. Um, but this is as close to the uh, feeling of hitting partner 
on Twitch as I can relate to everybody else. So, uh, it, as soon as I had this idea, I'm like, oh my god, this is actually literally perfect. I'll play this on stream. Come, Dobby. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself and watch your stream. Dobby. Master has given Dobby a sock. What? I didn't. Master has presented Dobby with clothes. Dobby is free. He can stream different content now. <laughs> they freed him from StarCraft commentary jail. <laughs> 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 you do your Twitch uh, application number four. You're like, hey, I'm from Hawaii and I moved here and I'm trying to go full time. I stream StarCraft Zerg and they're like, nope, still StarCraft jail. Apply again Deal next time. Deal. Yep. Yeah. Well, very big thank you, dude. I, I was really looking forward to this talk, actually, and and I had a lot of fun chatting with you about this. And um, looking forward to the future. Hell you know, yeah! Climbed, climbed one mountain, you reach the top of this one, and it's like, oh my god, what's up here? It's another mountain. You oh actually, you actually just got to Twitch base camp. <laughs> I got to the base camp. Yeah. I've been like. Climbing up this path like bare hands and knuckles bleeding when we get there and they're like, oh, hey, dude Welcome to the entrance. Here we go. We're starting now get get yourself up. We're walking up that gigantic mountain up there Yep, uh, if we're honest with ourselves apoptosis like he's gonna stream anyway But the real reason he went for twitch partner was to skip the lines at twitchcon Oh, and now you can actual play. Oh my <laughs> god, that is actually such a thing. If you've ever been to TwitchCon, you know exactly what we're talking about. Waiting in the three-hour affiliate and below line, holy shit! While watching partners literally take ten seconds and just walk into the entrance. From that moment on, I knew I have to hit Twitch Partner. Mm -hmm. Well, nice, dude. Good hearing some of your awesome, story. Bro. Go kick some ass in your games. Don't forget overlords yes, and spread sir. creep as fast as you can. Absolutely, bro. GG, fantastic talking with you, and I'll chat with you again soon, man. Hell! And that was Apoptosis, the story of the Goblin King, which, as we know, continues.